and welcome to All Things LGBTQ Plus Youth, Youth Edition. Edition. Today is July 15th? Yeah. Yes, 15th, yes. 2019. <laughs> My name is Jules. I use she, her pronouns. Next to me is... I'm Nave and I use he, him pronouns. I'm Jay and I use they, them pronouns. And today, we're going to be talking about the word queer. We're going to delve into its history. We're going to talk about our personal opinions on it. It's going to be super fun. We're going to do a whole bunch of stuff. So, let's start with, let's start with the history, I guess. The Oxford English, I'm reading off notes, by the way. <laughs> the Oxford English Dictionary credits the 16th century Scottish people for coming up with the word queer. It depicted accusation of sexual perversion or weakness. And the first person to use the word queer as a homophobic slur was, God, I'm bad at names, John Sholto Douglas. <laughs> he sounds like an asshole. <laughs> he sounds like an asshole. He is, as you, we will soon find out, in 1894. He was denouncing snob queers, like the one his eldest son was involved in, in a letter to his youngest son. And fun fact, his youngest son was having an affair with Oscar Wilde. So, <laughs> karma. I wish. <laughs> what was that? Nothing. What was that? <laughs> no, no. Anyways. Anyways. So, the, you, the use of the word queer as a slur reaches height in popularity in the late 1920s. But the Stonewall wa riots, 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 riots. Why Anyways, <laughs> well, they I mean, why back. in 1969 marked the beginning of the gay rights movement in the U.S. And from the start of the movement, members, members of the community called themselves queer as an act of defiance. Yet that age of sexual liberation in the 70s turned to tragedy in the 80s when more than 16,000 Americans died of AIDS-related AIDS complications in just five years. The AIDS crisis sparked an era of activism the crisis had a huge impact on the young activists who took up the word queer as a badge of courage. This all culminated in the founding of Queer Nation in 1990, and at Pride that same year, they passed out Queers Read This. For the first time, the world was hearing, we're here, we're queer, get used to it. That's what I have for your history lesson. Got any Latin lessons Got for any us? Latin lessons? No, sadly we're not doing Latin this time. Ugh. We're not talking about pansexuality. If we were, I'd have more Latin. <laughs> but we'll have another lat Latin lesson next time. We won't. We might. So anyways. <laughs> anyways, that sort of marks that that kind of brought us into the early 2000s. And then from there, there's been a huge change in the way the word queer has been used. Or change in that it's really picked up as less of a slur and more of a identity or mm -hmm. a common word used, especially with the online community growing. You mm -hmm. see it a lot more. And the only time I really hear it as a slur, and it doesn't count as a slur, is usually people in the community usually using me it other you people. A queer. Yeah. And they're not using it, like, they're using it as a joke, I guess? Like, not like, there are people who genuinely are like, oh yeah, you're, you're queer. But then there's other people that are like, oh, you queer, but they're in the community. So mm -hmm. like... And queer uh, has also, for throughout history has also been a synonym for odd or weird mm -hmm. or things like that. And it's just, so I think that's why a lot of people don't like to use it for themselves because it has relationship to those words and that's more uncomfortable to them, I think. So you don't like the word queer. Yeah, I so love the word queer and I'm really interested to go into this. Yeah, and so I'm medium on the word queer. Yeah, so I'm kind of <laughs> gonna not really go off, but I'm gonna just to say why I don't like the word queer. Mm -hmm. And I just wanna start by saying um, I'm I'm fine. Like I'm I'm totally supportive of anyone else using the word queer to describe themselves or something like that. I just don't like myself being called it being called queer and I don't like um, it being called the queer community. And am I allowed to say like other slurs too? Because I might use examples. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Disclaimer, if you have some problems with certain slurs, such as the T slur, the F slur, or the D slur, they might come out. Yeah, yeah. Blame Naven. <laughs> D slur? Oh. Yeah. Okay, anyways, so um, my experience with the word queer is that... Oh, the D slur is dingus. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. My experience with the word queer is that when I first came out and started to, like, figure out my identity as an LGBT person, um... It was used everywhere, like especially online, which was um, online. My school's GSA was the only um, exposure I had to the LGBT community whatsoever. T. 
<laughs> so, um, I that word was used a lot, um, as, and it wasn't really regarded as a slur. And I and it was never presented to me. And it's like, hey, like no no one ever was like, hey, queer is a slur to me when I first came out and was first figuring things out. So it never seemed to be a slur to me. And um, later, as I got older and I became more comfortable in my identity and I was hearing like different voices within the LGBT community, I realized like queer does have a very violent history being used as a slur and I wasn't comfortable being used that, um, being called queer. And I feel like um, a lot, this is a slight change, but I feel like a lot of younger people, especially like, um, when they first come out in like online communities or in their school GSAs, um, they sort of disregard queer's history and how heavy and like violent and awful it is. And um, I feel like there's just a lack of appreciation for the word queer um, in spaces that have younger kids. And I don't know, it just bothers me for them to be using that word without really understanding it. Mm -hmm. So my kind of personal experience with queer, since we're going to go into that a little bit right now, is um, to me queer has always been easier than having like individualized labels. Like even now, I still have a slight aversion to saying like I'm bisexual or I'm pansexual. We, because I still don't know the difference. <laughs> but so queer has always just been more comfortable, kind of like. I don't really, it literally just like not straight, not, not, I am cisgendered, <laughs> not straight, and just kind of, I don't have to like delve into like, oh, I like men and women and everything and all of that. I can just be like queer. Yeah. That's all you need to know. And like, while well, a lot of people do like um, using it, um, using it because of that reason, because it's easier to use and stuff, I personally, as um, a bisexual, Bisexuality. Bisexuality. Bisexual um, trans man, boy. <laughs> um, I'm not a man. You're not a man, though. No. So as a bisexual mm -hmm. um, trans boy, especially bisexual, I've seen um, a lot of bisexual people's identities erased um, by people either calling them gay, straight, or just queer. And so gay and straight's a whole other thing. but. Uh, people tend to erase bisexual people's identities just, just by calling them queer. Um, for whatever reason, I don't really know why. Maybe because, um, yeah, no, I actually have no idea why, but I've seen it happen a lot. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And just by, like, um, just owning my identity and, like, saying I'm bisexual has a lot of power for me personally because it's just not something I ever really see a lot. Mm hmm I get that a lot, and um, for me, kind of saying that, like I'm queer has more power in saying that, like I'm bisexual. At least to me, like I think there's power in both. Yeah. But for me, it's just like queer is more like if I take this word that has been used to hurt people, it can no longer hurt me. Yeah, and um, I don't know. I think my problem, especially when I was younger, is that it was forced on me a lot, mm -hmm. and that like. Um, like, I don't know, I just never got the chance to, re I never got the choice really to reclaim it for myself because it was always pushed on me so much. And like, um, here come the other slurs, but like the word tranny um, is something that I can reclaim and I call myself a tranny sometimes to sort, like basically for the reason you use queer to sort of like, um, you know, claim it back. But I still would find it offensive if someone else called me tranny. But my point is basically, I can reclaim that slur and I've had the time and um, to reclaim that slur and that's been my choice to reclaim that slur as opposed to queer just being pushed on me by everyone really which kind of sucks. Do you think like in life as you obviously get more time do you think you'd ever reclaim the word for yourself or um, do you think it's always going to be like an aversion towards that word? I think I, think I very well could. Um, it's it's just I have like, I obviously have a lot of feelings about that I have to work out and um, I don't know just maybe if it wasn't pushed on so many people like pushing on so many kids especially really bothers me like mm -hmm. younger kids like we'll talk about that a little bit too labels pushed on to kids yeah 
And um, another thing before we move on, because you also haven't said anything yet. And you I should, know. You should, I was like, I need to include Jay somehow. Yeah. I was thinking in my head, how do I do that? Yeah. Um, so before we move on is um, also that the word queer has been used to like erase like gay and lesbian people's identities mm -hmm. just by calling them queer or like trans people's identities, even if they don't want to like be called that and they just want to use their own labels. And it's like used as this big, um, like an, an umbrella term, but like, not everyone wants to use it, I guess, and people just mm -hmm. tend to ignore that. Yeah, I mean, sorry, I will include you in the conversation, I promise. I like queer as an umbrella term because the acronym that we have is ever-changing and growing, like, a lot. And, like, everyone, no one can really decide on an acronym to me, so I'm just, like, if there was a better word that wasn't queer, that wasn't a slur, yeah. I would use that to describe the whole LGBTQ plus community. Yeah. But I once had someone say, wow, it's really amazing how fast you can say LGBTQ plus. And I'm like, well, yeah, because I have to. Yeah, you, you get used to saying it. You just get used to kind of blurt it out. It all becomes like one huge word. Yeah, no, Sometimes I, I think of like BLTs. <laughs> Why do you think of LT, what? All the letters are in there. But anyways, yeah, no, I've seen people, um, <laughs> Yeah, no, I agree with you. For those <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just thinking of like a bisexual lesbian trans sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, yeah, no, I agree with you. I'd be, f I would be fine with some gross using one word <laughs> to describe the community. Mm -hmm. You just, just don't want it to be queer. I just yeah, as so. just because it's okay. a reclaimed slur. I okay. just not really. So, anyways, what is your personal experience with the word queer? Because oh, like, I mean, I've heard it used negatively. I've had people in my life use it negatively but I've never had it negatively used towards me, mm -hmm. per se. I've heard people use it as in like, oh, why is my phone being queer? Or that's kind of queer, like that. I'm kind of queer. And like, I've never had a problem myself with it. Mm -hmm. I knew its history and I knew that it could be bad. And then I knew that people have been using it to identify as themselves. So like I don't I like identify as I identify as queer, but at the same time like it's not like what I use. Like if I were just going to umbrella myself, I normally just say gay, which yeah, because people gay is also kind of been turning into more of a umbrella term, which is kind of weird because it's not a it's rich not it really like to me queer I feel like it's more of an umbrella term than gay because gay is literally just an identity. Or like homosexual, mm -hmm. but who's gonna like greet them? Like, is it like, if someone asks what your sexuality is, you're not gonna say, "Oh, I'm a homosexual." You're gonna yeah. say, "Oh, I'm gay." I mean, I would. You would, because well, you're extra. I I would call myself a homo, though. Yeah, I do. I have my own opinion about using gay as an umbrella term, but should we? I mean, I don't know. Like, again, I'm very middle on the using gay as an umbrella term, because mm -hmm. um, like that erases identities but also it gives us something, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I feel like currently the, the technical, if we were going to umbrella term anything, it would supposed to be LGBTQ plus. I mean, like but LGBTQIA at the plus same LGBTQ time, time, at the same time, it's like, people are lazy and not everyone's gonna say the acronym. And so, things like queer or gay get used as an umbrella term instead. I had a comment, but I forgot it. Can I go? Okay, so, um, well, I've heard people say that, like, oh, I just don't want to say the whole acronym as an excuse to just call the whole community queer. I've also heard people say that, oh, you can make cute um, frickin' puns out of it as an excuse to use the word queer. And I don't know. Like, I've actually heard people say that. I can't remember who it was. But, um, that's, I mean, that's just really, I feel like that just shows that they really don't appreciate the history of the word. Mm -hmm. Cause like, if they had a good reason to use it, I might listen to them. But since they're just like, oh, it's easy. It's easier to say tranny than transgender, but you don't see people Just doing that. Just say trans. I mean, it's yeah. literally shorter than the slur, anyways. Yeah, <laughs> I know, but like my, that's basically my point. Yeah, and um, you can continue. Sorry. Okay, and pause. A, 
slight tangent, but about using gay as an umbrella term. Mm -hmm. Do you mind if I go into that? Sure. Okay. Um, it's kind of, um, well, it's not, I don't, I don't think it should be used as an umbrella term because it definitely erases by people's identities. Like I've, like people call me gay as a joke and like that's fine and all, but they know I'm bi. Mm -hmm. But um, I've seen plenty of people on the internet be like, oh, I'm bi, but I call myself gay, lol. Haha. <laughs> I'm so, yeah. And it's just, um, like, if you were to, um, okay, this is a personal experience, but I came out to my dad and I was like, I'm gay. At the time, I thought I was pansexual. I thought that would get the message across. Obviously, it wouldn't. We talked about them the last time. Last time we did, yeah. I was like, have you updated him at all? Still no. haven't, no. Um, <laughs> no, but it's like, that doesn't, like, just saying you're gay, like, if I were to go up to someone and say I'm gay, they'd probably be like, oh, he likes boys and only boys, mm -hmm. which mm -hmm. isn't true. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know. And, like, I don't know, using gay as an umbrella term is just, like, mm -hmm. never really made sense to me. Like, I might call myself gay as a joke, but I'm still, like, no, I'm, I'm yeah. bisexual. because, like, I make jokes about being a lesbian all the time. Yeah. And, like, I'm not a lesbian. Fun fact. I <laughs> do like men occasionally. I mean, literally, I my family member, like, I've told you this story. I don't know if I've People told you. People just think I'm a lesbian. No. Do you have the same problem? Well, literally, I came back from the, the, the queer summit. I mean, the... I mean, it's called the Queer Youth Summit. Yeah, yeah no, and I, I have problems with that. We'll continue. <laughs> um, and uh, I, was, I was just sitting down eating dinner. My family sat down, looked at me, and goes, I don't think you're pansexual. And so I just prepared myself to be like, oh, here we go. Like, they're going to say I'm straight. And then my family goes, I think you're a lesbian. And I'm like, you're all family in unison. Yeah, it's all no time. ones. Yes, and all the dogs, <laughs> all, all the yep. six dogs mm -hmm. in unison. <laughs> um, and I mean, I don't know if it's worse or better. Like, oh, my family doesn't think I'm straight. <laughs> That's something. They know that. But they know you're not straight. <laughs> yeah, they know. They're I'm just not sure what else. <laughs> uh, they know I'm not straight, but like, yeah. So, when it comes to like people using umbrella terms or people using slurs for themselves and things like that. In my mind, I won't really ever police someone's language. So I think you have the right to say whatever you want to say. I think there are words you obviously shouldn't say. And I might be like, hey, white person, don't go running around saying the N-word. But I can't necessarily stop them. So I, and like when it comes to like slurs, especially within the LGBTQ plus community, I was gonna call it the queer one, but that counts. I mean, so. you could just call it the community. If it's you're with a group of people that know what you're talking about, yeah, you can okay. just call it the Especially community. Especially the community, when it comes to like slurs and stuff, I do not care how you choose to use them. As long as you're not using them against other people. Yeah. If you're using them towards yourself, I mean, go ahead is how I feel. Mm -hmm. I just don't think you should use them at other people or label other people. Yes, and that's how I grew up with um, swears too. It's like as long as you're not using them to hurt someone, you can say them. Context matters, mm -hmm. which is how I grew up with swears and that's kind of how I treat slurs. Like I'll call myself queer. I know Naven doesn't like it, so I'm not gonna call him that. Yeah, but um, so that's the thing with umbrella terms though, is that like you ask anyone, they're, and if you ask anyone like, does trans um, fall under the queer umbrella? Does bisexual fall under the queer umbrella? They're gonna say yes, mm -hmm. and that's me. So th therefore, they're labeling me as queer, yeah. and like even like really big organizations in the state, like outright Vermont, which I absolutely love. This is a call out post. <laughs> yeah, no, it's not supposed to be a call, but I, ab I absolutely love outright. But they use it. They use it all the time, like the at queer youth summit. The queer youth summit. Friday when night group is a group for queer questioning. Queer trans and questioning, and like I spent so much time, like this is. A little personal, but I spent a lot of time trying to be like, oh, it's okay, they're not calling me queer. See, there's the trans, that's what they're talking about with me regarding Friday Night Group. And I'm like, no, they're they're calling me queer. Mm -hmm. And like, even at the youth summit, like when we walked in like the doors, like the um, welcoming presentation or whatever, it was like, welcome queers. And I was like, well, oh, fuck. Um, like, shit, <laughs> shoot. Sorry. PG-13, you're allowed to say one. One. Okay, I'm sorry. I mean, you already said a lot of stuff. I'm sorry, guys. I just blew it. Um, 
But anyways, yeah. You used it, Maven, dude. I'm sorry, but like, it just feels really awful having like this big organization that's supposed to like speak for me and um, like protect me mm -hmm. and care about me calling me slurs. And like, I know a lot of, um, I know some of the um, people who run out, right? Um, adults. Adults who run out, right? Yeah. And like, I know they care about me and all, but like, I'm still getting called queer. And like, mm -hmm. I know if I were to talk to them, they'd be like, oh, it's okay, Naven. We won't use the word queer when you're around, but they're still like using it whenever I'm not there. And it, I, don't mm -hmm. know, I don't know. It's just, that was yeah. a tangent, but yeah. Yeah. And um, I had a personal experience with the word queer quite recently that actually fueled the fire to make this episode. Fun fact. Uh, that's literally why we're here. That's literally why I was sitting in this chair. You both know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, the Empower Mont Festival is held by my high school, and it's this fun time where everyone goes. They invite clubs to go and table. That's where I got this water bottle. Yeah, they give you free swag. I took <laughs> all the free stuff because I'm cheap. But I, my, the, the Empower Mont Festival people who were making it approached the GSA at our school and was like, hey, do you guys want a table here and like have your stuff out? And we were like, sure, let's do it. So my advisors of the GSA came to me and they were, for some reason, put me in charge. I don't know why, but they were literally like, you're doing this. You have and I was like, great. TV show? Uh, that doesn't mean I'm responsible. You have a TV show. Anyways. <laughs> but so I, they were like, okay. Sure, I'll do it. So I brought a bunch of stuff. I brought button makers. I brought this flag, and I made some pamphlets. And the pamphlets had a bunch of terms that I just, just randomly decided to throw in there. And I, ha I limited myself to eight um, terms per like section of the pamphlet because I wanted to make them rainbow. <laughs> so I put queer on there, and I had a bunch of people um, that night be like, "Hey, queer should not be on there, or it should have some sort of warning." or it essentially that it like shouldn't be on there. And they, um, these people took the pamphlets that I had made and started like crossing, the, crossing it off and changing them around. And that's, and then, and then that was the end of the night and I got, it led into this whole spiral of discussions about the word queer within our little school community and led to me losing a lot of very close friends. So that's why, they, that's why we're here <laughs> because I wanted to talk about it as in a more respectful place. Cause like, Naven and I have talked about it a lot too. Yeah. And you, I actually enjoy talking about it. Cause you're like, you know, decent. And then we had a sleepover. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and like, I, I wanted to have this episode who could be like a respectful discussion about it, which I think is kind of lacking within the community, respectful, constructive discussions, especially when it comes to things like this. Yeah. So I was like, hey, Naven, I know you're not a complete asshole. And I know you don't like the word queer. Let's chat about it. And then I yeah. was like, I need a third person, Jay. I love that I'm just the tag along now. <laughs> like, I need someone else. Ah, this yeah. person will do. Yeah, just <laughs> throw them in there. Yeah, Can, um, do you want me to talk a bit about, like, yeah. um, the very extreme, extremely, like, opposing the word queer? You want to play devil's advocate? Yeah. Yeah, you can play devil's advocate. Yeah. Go nuts. Sort of a segue coming from that story, but... Um, yeah. People are crazy. Mm. So <laughs> um, there's some people in the community who think that you should never use the word queer ever, even to describe yourself um, sometimes, which isn't exactly what the people at the Empower Vermont Festival thought, but they were pretty close from what I could tell. I don't know. I, I don't want to speak on their opinions because I don't know them fully. But, um, so a lot of people think like you shouldn't use it to describe yourself. It, it doesn't count as an identity um, and you shouldn't call the community that. And they'll also, this is mostly online that I've seen it, but they'll also like harass people who identify only as queer, mm. um, which is obviously messed up. And, um, and it'll lead some people to do stuff like um, destroy the pamphlets, which I was sort of a part of. Like I was there for it and the people sort of dragged me along with it. And random little off topic. Didn't in one of them they crossed out pansexuality? Yeah, they, they crossed out pan, they crossed out demi, they crossed out a bunch of them that they felt shouldn't be on there. It, it was a time. It was a time. Keep yeah. in mind, these are people who were running around making a bunch of slurs on pins. They had um, 
made, I had put the T slur on pins, they had put the F slur, they had put the D slur. I mean, like, we weren't handing them out. But, I know, but yeah. like, if you, to, it makes, personally, it makes no sense to me, because I feel like, again, for me, I think, I believe that, like, slurs and swears have, like, different levels of badness, and I feel like queer is kind of l- less bad in my mind than, like, the D slur or, like, the F slur. Like, yeah. Some people, obviously, you probably disagree with that. No, actually, no, I would agree. Like, I'd take more offense to someone calling me tranny than someone calling me queer, but I still wouldn't like it either. I would take a lot more offense if someone used the F slur at me. Mm -hmm. So that's sort of just, like, why I got, like, why that sort of confused me. Like, the F slur is probably the one that I'm the most uncomfortable with. Mm -hmm. Like, queer, in my mind, isn't that bad compared to that. Yeah. So I agree with that. To me... Mainly because I've, like, reclaimed queer. Yeah, and I mean, even... I mean, I know some of my friends who do, like, have, like... They they feel like they've reclaimed the F slur. Mm -hmm. But I... I don't know. Sometimes when I hear I legit, like, cringe. I get... Which I get... I mean, that must be how some people feel with the word queer as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is, yeah. Especially, I feel like, in older generations, too. Because I feel like now, obviously, we hear a little bit less of the word queer. That's why we still hear it. Yeah. But I think we hear it a little bit less. And I think with older generations, they might have more of a problem with it because it was so prevalent as, like, a attacking word. Whereas, like, now, like, the F slur, the D slur, they're kind of the more attack-like words now. So if someone who I know isn't joking around with me called me the D slur, I would also freeze up because I'd be like, gotta run. Like, yeah. bye. So, yeah. Um... Going off of what you said about older people who might have actually had queer use as a slur against them, mm-hmm. um, a lot of organizations, um, not organizations, but like um, more, I don't know how to describe this, like people who are just like more than a bunch of kids or teenagers. Adults? No, like people who have influence. I mean, like I guess mostly adults, but like. Influencers? <laughs> Jesus Christ, yes. So I've seen... Okay. Yes, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to say... Jesus Christ is the biggest influencer. <laughs> He's bigger than James Charles. I mean, he, t- yes. Anyways, I'm just going to say He people. has an entire religion. <laughs> I'm just going to say some people I've seen... So some people are like, oh, you shouldn't use queer around older people because they might have trauma related to it and um, you don't want to trigger that. And like, while that's good and all... Mm-hmm. Um, my personal problem is with that is like you don't have to have trauma associated with something to be uncomfortable with it. Yes. Like um, I don't have trauma associated associated with the F slur, but I still don't want to be called that. I'm still uncomfortable with that. Yeah. And I don't know. That's just like one excuse I've um, seen people use to not use queer mm-hmm. all the time. And like while I agree with that on some level, it's also kind of um, ignoring a bigger problem or ignoring that like some people. Yeah. Like, might just not like the word. Yeah, I mean, I've never had any negative experience being yeah. called the ass slur or the D slur, but if you call me that and you are serious and you're, like, being an ass about it, yeah. I will get upset. I mean, I've been called the F slur, mm-hmm. but, like, in a negative sense. Yeah. And it's not fun. But at the same time, people say that the older people might be triggered. But I actually hear a lot of the older, of, like, o- older people of the community use it mm-hmm. yeah. I mean it's hard to talk in generalizations because yeah. everyone has regarding different this, yeah. opinions and honest, in, in my mind I will use the word queer until uh, someone tells me hey I don't like that word for me like it may not be the best but I really can't know until someone's like so, yeah but I'm let you finish your thoughts <laughs> so that's just kind of how I feel about like a lot of words like with queer it's like if I I'll use it and then if you tell me, hey, I really don't like that word, can you not use that for me, or can you not call it the queer community, then I'll stop. Like, because with you, you like told me, hey, I don't like this word for myself, yeah. and I will not call you that. But Jay is like chill with it, as far as I know. I mean, I don't. It, if I mean, I don't have a problem with people using it. It's just not something I will go out of my way to say. I mean, yeah, like it's, it's kind of like indifferent. It. Like I said, I'm indifferent on that word. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. I mean, like, like obviously I can't control what you say, and mm-hmm. that's more of a compromise than I've gotten some, from some people in the past. Um, but I don't know. I just feel like 
when it comes to slurs, it shouldn't be like I'm gonna use it until someone say says no. It should be mm-hmm. I'm gonna use it if someone says yes. I guess. Yeah. But obviously, like, I don't know. I don't know. It's also like a sort of amount of frustration of like watching people strug- struggle to say LGBT in front of me. Um, I I know you did it earlier this episode. This isn't directed at you. This is in general. People will like. Um, they know I don't like it. And it's like, and I know they say it behind my back and they call it the queer community behind my back. So it's just like all that much weirder when Mm -hmm. um, they're very obviously struggling to say LGBTQ plus in front of me. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, it's just like, it's the same sort of energy I would feel or like same sort of, yeah, energy I would get like from, or same vibe I would get from people who like obviously were misgendering me behind my back when I first came out as trans and they're then again, not directed at anyone here, like, they would misgender me when I first came out as trans behind my back, and then, like, whenever I was there, they were, like, very obviously struggling to get my pronouns right. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it just feels like that, I guess. So, say I was with, like, a group of people who I know are, like, completely fine with the word queer. Yeah. Like, they even, like, like it, and I called it the queer community then, would that, would you still find that as an issue, or would you still consider that a problem? I mean... I don't know, it's like, I'm sort of, um, for lack of a better word, like, sort of lenient on it, like, um, I wouldn't have so much of a problem with people saying it behind my back if, like, so many, like, straight and cis allies didn't call it the queer community, if, like, I didn't get called queer by LGBT people all the time, stuff like that, Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like, I, I probably wouldn't care as much if I didn't get called queer all the time. You would, you you don't want to get that forced on to you. Yeah, and that's fair. I think no one really likes anything when it's being forced on to them. Yeah, and um, I don't know. I guess for me, queer has always just been more comforting because it's like a label that I know is never gonna change. Because I went through label after label. Because obviously I'm a teenager. When you come out t- at twelve, your labels are gonna change a little bit. <laughs> it's like yeah. I came out as bisexual. I switched to pansexual. I came. I'm bisexual, but I, I mean, stick with queer because I know well the terms underneath that may change queer is never gonna change yeah i know i'm always not gonna be 100 percent straight <laughs> yeah i mean as someone who came out as girls quite young as well i think i came out around 13 i mean my labels have changed i thought i was trans for god's sake i mean yeah i i have had a lot of label changes myself but mm-hmm. i've always found that at least the people that i've been around has always been supportive of the whatever I am, so. Okay. So. Yeah, I think. I think think we have to wrap this up, and I think what I try to do to end it is let's say a sentence or so as our final thought and our final takeaway. Jay, you start. (laughs) Um, words have powerful feelings behind them, no matter what you use. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, just be careful um, who you use queer around, especially if you're an ally. Just don't go calling it the queer community, please. I am begging you. <laughs> I've had enough experiences with um, straight allies being like, queer community, yeehaw, I don't know. Yeehaw. And yeehaw. And like, as soon as I'm that's what all straight people say. Yeah. 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 And, and then, like, as soon as someone's like, hey, I'm not too comfortable with queer, they're like, oh okay Mm -hmm. and they're like sort of pissy about it i don't know Mm -hmm. yeah that wasn't a sentence but continue (laughs) i guess for me language is really tricky words have a lot of power and it's really difficult to have a kind of cohesive understanding about words right this has been all things lgbtq plus youth Youth edition Edition. thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next month or i'll see you next month bye Thank you.